I just finished a video on how to use timers in GameLab on Code.org to make elements move around the screen or disappear or whatever you want to do. And so I thought since I had this already made, I would just continue and turn this into a simple clicker style game. So you can pause it here and look at the code if you want to, but essentially I've just made a variable called timer and I've added one to that timer every time the draw loop passes through, which is 30 times per second. And since I want my star to move every second, I just say if the timer gets bigger than 30, put it in a new random X and Y position on the screen. And because I want that to happen more than once, I reset my timer to zero and start the whole process over again. You can see the timer moving right here. So now that I have that completed, I want to add some functionality, some interactivity to the game. So I'm going to start by making it respond to a click. So first I'll say if, and, and all of your ifs need to be inside the draw loop, uh, if the mouse is pressed over the star, then um, I want my score to go up, but I don't actually have a score yet. So first I need to come up here and use var whenever you create something. So I'm gonna say var score equals zero. And if my mouse is pressed over the star, I want my score to go up. So I'll say score equals score plus one. Let's try that out. Oh, well, you can't see score, so I'm going to watch it here. Right now it's zero. And when, I, when I'm over it, you can see my score is going up. Let's put it on the screen so it's a little easier to see. So I'm going to grab a text block. And I want this to be below draw sprites. And I'll just put the score. And I want it down here in the corner somewhere. So maybe at uh, 350, 350. Okay. It's in the right spot. It's kind of small. So I'll grab a text size. And put it above the text, text block. So I'll make that maybe a size 80. Okay, that's good. It's too close to the edge, but everything else is fine. So I'll make this 340. Okay, so now if the mouse is pressed over, that should update. And it is, but you'll notice it's updating uh, too quickly. But let's scoot it over first of all. Okay, you see it's updating too much. So what I can do is before I add to my score, let's move it away. So I'm going to copy these two, control C. And above my score change, I want to paste a new lo a new random location to the star. So now it can only do one each time. All right, so that's working just fine. Uh, let's make the background a different color. Okay, so, um, that's working. The next thing I want to try to add in here is I'd like if the user misses and presses somewhere other than the star for them to lose a point. So let's come down here and grab another if. And this time we actually need to check for two things. We need to check that the, uh, well, first of all, mouse pressed over is actually checking two things. It's, at, it's checking is the mouse on top of the star and is it pressed at the same time. So this is sort of a combination one. We don't have that for not pressed. So we're going to have to make one. Uh, we're going to check for two conditions right here. And to do that, we're going to go into the math tab and grab a double and. Uh, so the first one is we do want to check if the mouse has been pressed down. So we're going to grab a mouse went down. And we also want to check um, that the mouse is not over the star. So we don't have a not. we got to come over here to math grab this exclamation point, which is a not, and go back to world and say, um, okay, the left button went down and it is not, um, mouse is over. And here's where we're going to indicate the star. So we're saying, if the mouse went down and the mouse is not over the star, then we can do the opposite with the score. Score equals score minus one. And we don't actually need to move the star if they got it wrong. So 
Let's try that. First, let's get some points racked up here. Okay, now we're going to mess up on purpose and click in other locations. And you can see the score going down. And then the only thing left is if they go below zero, we want the game to end. So uh, let's do that. Let's say if score is less than, well, the game starts at zero, so zero is okay. But less than zero should be a problem. If the score is less than zero, the first thing we want to do is hide the star. So we're going to grab a visible. We're going to set the stars visible to false. And we want maybe a new background color that's under drawing. Maybe red, and we also want to put some new words on the screen. Let's say game over. We'll put that at maybe 10, 200. Let's try that. So this part still works. And then we get less than one. Okay, so my words are too big. Uh, we can. Grab a text size and make them maybe 50. And we can scoot them over if we need to. Too far. Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, and there's a simple little clicker game. Uh, the only other thing you might do is now that you've got it working, you could uh, speed up the timer. So instead of moving once a second, you can make it move every half second to make it a little bit harder. Uh, you can make it jump around that way. Um, you might also consider uh, making it spin around, which is kind of cool. Um, you can give it a rotation speed. Let's try that. Well, that's not very fast. Let's try 90. That's too much. We might just play and see what you come up with.